which is horrible, <laughs> Brian. Yes, isn't it? It, it sounds nothing like the AI that we have with uh, the auto blow. Anyway, Brian, man, first and foremost, thank you so much. Yes, that, that, that's you up top, man. I don't know what her name is, but yo, so excited to talk to you, man. Of course, the, the big focus is going to be on this. Yes, the world now knows I am the proud owner of an auto blow AI. Are we calling it the AI Plus or just the AI? No, the, the new one is the auto blow AI Plus. Okay, so, so we do have the plus sign on it because. Like, this is technically, technically, like, the first AI version. I'm just kind of excited. Is it because, like, we're looking at Apple Plus and Disney Plus? Is that why we added the Plus? What's the real reason behind the Plus? No, I mean, uh, we don't want to change the name. It is, it's still the Autoblow AI. So it's, it looks the same as the previous one where we did the blowjob uh, machine learning study. But we added internet features. So it's not, not the AI. It's still the AI, but it does more stuff. And Plus is a, an easy way to describe you know, more stuff yeah. in one word. Gotcha. And Brian, it's so crazy. Like normally, like whenever I do these like types of conversations and interviews, like like kind of also how you do with Howard, right? Where you'll talk a little bit about whatever that is, but people want to know like, what are you into? What do you watch? Not even just porn. Are you watching Netflix? Are you on Disney Plus? Blah, 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 right? But because this is such a dope launch, because there's so much game changing technology involved, man, uh, there's just going to be a heavy emphasis on this, but Giving you a second, man. Can you exhale? Like, this has been so many months in the making. I wanted to talk to you back in January. You're like, yo, summertime, it's coming. No pun intended. Oh, man. So I've, I've been waiting for months for this opportunity. Can you exhale? Not yet. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we've been working on it for two years. So, um, yeah, no, it doesn't feel actually when you launch something after working on it for so long. It's not exactly like a, a like a high feeling. It's almost like a low feeling, even though it's exciting. Like now, some press is picking up. It's making its way around the internet. But strangely, when you know, like the emotion of launching something, and then when it happens, it's uh, a little stressful. It's like a yeah. high and low mixed together. You know. Yeah, you got. You know what? It's probably like whenever like a new movie comes out at the box office, right? Like you know, you're excited, but like now it's like the box office numbers. What do the critics ultimately feel about it? But I just know, you know, from being able to uh, experience it, review it, man, and then just some initial feedback, man. I was uh, checking out some of the uh, quick feedback from people who, like myself, had the opportunity to try it out. There are so many perks and so many additions outside of just kind of what you see in the main rundown that people are, are attached to this thing. Again, no pun intended, man, but like, like yo, this device, man, you know, I, I want to take a second and like show off some of the features, but my yeah. goodness man um mind-blowing uh just from like internal uh crowds like what is that feedback been like are people like yo this is black mirror type stuff what are you doing brian what is some of the internal camp stuff happening i mean uh, we sent it just like uh maybe 30 or so of our um sort of top customers top customers being people who use we know they use the product a lot they buy sleeves um they communicate like to communicate with us and uh yeah i think I think the thing that they mentioned that they like the most is the ability that we use the internet uh, not so much as a way to interact with other people, uh, w although you can do that if you want to, but more as a way to access things that the device can do that it couldn't do only with four buttons. So it's like because we have the, the screen of your phone or your iPad or your computer, we can we can it, it's capable of doing extra things that you can't access with four buttons, like downloading new blowjob experiences. So we'll continue to to add normally when you buy a device it's kind of dead it's finished it's been developed and it's dead but i think we think it's cool and those guys think it's cool that once they have it then they can uh, we'll keep putting out new blowjobs for them uh that they can uh they can download to th their device for offline use so i think that was kind of a top one and i think the voice control it's kind of novel um they've never been able to control their anything with like like that with their voice and and also you know i think you noticed it doesn't have a wake word. You don't have to say to it something like, hey, auto blow, and then wait a second. Uh, yep. It's a very new technology that we use that does voice control in the browser. And so it's instant. You say the thing and it's instant because it's only going between your phone and the device instead of to a, a, a server far away. So yeah, I mean, and what we'll really get the big feedback is now that we're selling, like thousands of people are buying it. So we, We'll know in a few days how people actually feel, which that's also a nervous feeling. Oh, no, and, and uh, gosh, 
I tell you, man, I said 10 to 15 minutes. I'm really going to try to hold in on that or hold in on that because, Ryan, there's so many things to talk about. Uh, for anyone that's, like, watching this, I don't know if they caught it because the camera goes back and forth. But I just want to, like, point out, like, I'm actually on the app, right? And I'm just, you know, for the sake of, like, in, in the moment, go. Like, like it, it's literally voice active. I know. You're like, you're like Cyrus. I've been testing this out for years. I know the function. But for people <laughs> that are, like, actually want, like, hip-hop guys, uh, and we'll talk about that in a few moments, uh, you know, some other features are uh, slower. I mean, like, like, and I actually, you know what I'll do just for, for the purpose of just, like, putting it closer, um, you know, faster. Well, I'm just going right there. Pause, pause. Mom's calling. Pause. Pause. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. So, anyway, you know and then I got to tell you, and I want to give uh, give you an opportunity, opportunity to yeah. talk about it as well. Right again, I'm all giggity, man. This is like me, like playing with X Men toys or like the turtles back in the days. And like, oh my gosh, it actually like goes back into the shell. But the freestyle feature is absolutely amazing, man. And I'm gonna put the camera back on you. But for anyone that's watching right now, I mean, insanely, you change the speed up. There's the area where just talk about the freestyle feature that I was kind of blown away by testing it out. Yeah, this was something also that guys asked us because the problem when you make things for people's penises is that everyone's penis is a different size and it's really hard to make sure that the mo the you know the the modes or the blowjobs that it gives um, accommodate everyone's size so we gave a, a method to control not only the speed but the part of the penis that's being stroked and uh, you can control it to make it go within like a very small area so it it just it allows a level of customization that 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 they haven't seen before on other devices like this, and uh, I think it's one they're gonna like. But uh, again, in a few takes, a few days for us to once the people receive them, we'll know what they think. No, definitely, and and I mean like just to be quite honest, I gotta say I'm getting more excitement and enjoyment out of my iPhone 13 Pro Max with this new app launch, man, than I have with TikTok or anything else because you know you pay so much for these iPhones and uh, you know. To your point about, you know, previous editions, like being able to mesh what we're attached to, like 24-7, which is our phones, and being able to even go with the voice command. And yeah. well, listen, you know what, look, we're just going to be honest. When you're dealing with lubricants and things like things can get very messy, man. So with the voice command, it just makes life a lot easier. And your phone is always going to be around you. It just really just pairs two massive, powerful forces. Of course, the Autoblo uh, AI Plus with your iPhone or I guess can it work on Androids as well? Android yeah. friendly as well? And anything with a screen. So that's a computer, an iPad, a phone, anything that connects to the internet that's not like five years old or something, you know, like a relatively newer a phone or or pa any kind of uh, tablet or computer. Yeah. 100%. Hey, Brian, I know you're talking about this, like, basically in all your marketing. I mean, whoever is behind all those cartoons and things uh, on the site, man, is just genius. I, I know that you probably got to, like, co-sign and approve everything, but uh, you speak to so many men out there. I remember, I would say, once I was, like, really into my 20s and, you know, my dating got a little bit more intense, I would be very jealous of a lot of the girls I was dating they would have like a little portable vibrator like in their purses. Like, like I was always envious of the fact that, you know, they didn't need me. And then there was like, okay, I'm not gonna get too explicit, but the whole point is they always had that backup option. And I feel, you know, for years at this point, Brian, you come through for men, uh, like this is now our oversized vibrator and it just, it, it's a life changer. And I don't say that lightly. It really has changed the game, man. I mean, I I appreciate the, you you saying it, and I've worked now since I've been doing this in this business for twelve or thirteen years, and what I noticed when I came in is that it was just starting then this like wave of sort of like masturbation is empowerment for women, but at the same time masturbation was the butt of jokes for men. So you could look at you know there's uh there there's some uh, somewhere on YouTube I've seen it. It's just a compilation of uh. Uh, masturbation jokes about men masturbating in in movies, you know, in Hollywood films. So, I mean, how do you think that uh, uh, boys and men feel about their body pleasure being the butt of jokes, but women's body pleasure being like an empowering, important thing? Uh, I don't think they would feel very good about that. And I don't think that anyone could explain what's funny about male masturbation and what's not funny about female. Why is male masturbation funny, but female masturbation isn't? I, and I don't think it's funny. I mean, it's a little bit funny, but I think it's uh, 
I think it's a normal and important uh, a part of life. And that's why I've always used, you know, before I, when I came into this industry, there were no company owners who were also the spokesman, especially on the male side. And actually now they're still not, there are no male company owners who are the spokesman for, for their brand. Uh, they hired women uh, like porn actor actresses uh, mainly to pretend like they cared about the brand. They don't care about the brand, you know? So I think uh, people notice that I was the inventor of the product, but also I'm happy to show my face and say that this is a, a perfectly normal thing to do with yourself. No, 100%, man. I, again, it's just game changing and just kind of going back to some of the perks. Uh, it's quieter. And one of the biggest things I haven't actually had the opportunity to, but like being able to tighten up the grip is super important, man. And, uh, you know, I thought it might get a little bit chaotic, like, oh, man, I got to get the screwdriver. But seeing some uh, videos and seeing just how simple it is, uh, how important was it, you know, to make sure that it was even that much customizable away from the AI aspect, but just from a physical standpoint that, yeah, you can just tweak it and make that experience even better for you. Yeah, it was a, it was a thing. Our customers, when they, you know, normally like in any business, if customers like something, very few of them say anything to you, but all, you, you mainly <laughs> hear from people who don't like something. And so we went back and we analyzed the emails. So, okay. If people complained about Autoblow AI, what did they complain about? And we thought maybe the gripper should be bigger or smaller. And it's like 50, 50, half of them with the complaints would say, this thing is too tight. I can't possibly use it. And the others would say, this is too loose. I can't possibly use it. So then, yeah, I just thought, okay, we need to come up with a design uh, that, that where we can adjust the gripper. And I think that's super important because they're not people, no other devices actually are, are really made, they're made in a middle size. And you think, okay, if this captures the 70% of the people, then we're good. But actually that's not okay because 30% of men is a lot of men who have either a big, it, it tends I think towards the smaller than the bigger, but uh, yeah. especially for people with a smaller penis, the smaller than average, I mean, an average penis, then I don't think it would feel nice to buy a, a, a device like this, especially one that costs as much as Audible does and, and then to be let down that uh, it's not tight enough for you. So this gripper adjustment thing was really important in light of you know what our customers told us. And so we made it like a key component of the of the new device. Yeah, and, and another, just kind of add on to that one, another thing that actually I just got put on to, uh, today when I was just kind of looking at the site and scrolling through is you can change out the sleeve. And initially I thought, oh, you just get a different mouth sleeve, but no, you actually have vagina, you know, sleeve. Like, like there's different options, which I think is super yeah. crucial because, you know, I'm still a youthful young man and I like this idea of working on my stamina, right? Like, like, Again, I don't want to get too personal with this because then people are going to be like, TMI. But no, like, like there is a luxury of, you know, hey, you want to perform better in the bedroom for your partner that you can actually use this almost like going to the gym or working out. And for me, for whatever reason, the mouth is one thing, but seeing a vagina right there, when, and it goes back to, to the grip part, right? You know, you kind of imagine a mouth being a little bit looser, a vagina being a little bit tighter type of thing, but... Um, yes, the sleeves are super important, man, and, and no brainer. It obviously, works perfectly with the AI Plus. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the sleeves from the AI work with the AI Plus. It's the same sleeves, and yeah, there's mouth, vagina, and uh, anus, and there's uh, like a, a, a that color skin behind you, and there's a brown skin option for yes. both. So, um, yeah, I think different people's fantasies. Uh, need to like try and, and also i mean obviously we could come out with other sleeves that are aliens and uh yeah you know i mean there's no limit you know we're just hit, trying to hit like the 80 percent with the, the human <laughs> orifices but yeah i think there's still like a 20 percent where we could make aliens and uh i don't know wolves i, I don't know but there's a no limit but what we focus on on that side on the 80 percent of 90 percent of people who want another a human orifice that's uh, like not like a fantasy orifice but a normal one yo 100 and brian one thing that i personally love man is just how public and this kind of goes to your point a little while ago about you know male masturbation being kind of a big joke but now it's becoming more accepted and more understood and i'll tell you you know around the world men are a lot nicer when they don't have all that built up energy and then they kind of let loose a little bit man but I just kind of, you know, bring that all back to about how much publicity, how much marketing there's been. Uh, I know I personally reached out to you when I saw the auto blow was on Little Dicky Dave, right? And then, of yeah. course, weeks later, you're on 
uh, the Howard Stern show on Sirius XM, winning yeah. not only just caring, but winning, no brainer, right? The, the, the Sex Tycoon yeah. Awards. Just talk about these past few months to a year. Um, and I got to know how in the world did the article make it into Dave? Were you aware of yeah. that or was that just a surprise? Yeah, well, they had um, the uh, Dave's agent, I think, uh, had contacted us. Uh, actually, they, they made a purchase. I, I got actually started communicating with them because they had made a purchase from the website. And uh, it was uh, whatever the credit card they used might have been for whatever reason, we blocked it. And, uh, and then I was contacting them and I noticed the email address. And then I said, we started communicating. They were annoyed that we had canceled the order because we thought it was a fraudulently placed order. And then uh, they were like, no, this isn't a fraud order. Like our credit card system was weird. So I, then I started communicating with them. And um, yeah, actually we were talking about potentially working together, but then suddenly the the uh, the product was in the episode in the pool and we actually didn't know that that was coming uh so yeah him or his character are interested in this kind of stuff and i think they must have also seen auto blow online they thought it was like a good match for the show and yeah that scene was awesome with uh it's with him and um benny blanco and uh yeah. kylie jenner and uh yeah with <laughs> yeah that I, was I, awesome. I, 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 Yo, Brian, out of all the episodes to be featured in, that had to be one of the best ones. Like you said, Kylie Jenner, like her fans are going to tune in just to see her. And like I said, that promotion, which leads me back to what I mentioned a moment ago, being on Stern, number one, I was shocked. Like, I was hearing it, and then like, Brian's going from Audible. I literally, I, I told you, I was screaming. I was like, oh my God, Brian's on there, man. Talk about uh, how much planning, uh, like, like that just seemed super random, but was that also a situation where some PR stuff was happening and you landed on the show? uh so they were they had reached out uh to my pr person that they were looking to do a uh, some some kind of uh uh a shark tank style show on on uh on, on the stern show and um yeah so that was a long that was a very long planning process for that segment um uh, i introduced them a few people that i thought could be potential good guests also for the segment and uh, yeah, it, it all came together. It was me and uh, the guy with the thing for your balls, and this yeah. guy that makes dolls, uh, that makes dolls uh, that he rents to people. Uh, yeah, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was very, inter very interesting. Um, yeah, but that was great. And a lot of people have, it's just interesting when, when, when people email me that I, I've met one or two times, whatever, they have my email. And like when it's on something like the Stern Show or when it's on the Dave Show, I get like random emails from people that I've met at random times in my life. Like, oh, I just saw the auto blow on this place. So it's interesting how it really like spreads out the, the knowledge of the 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 product. And um, <laughs> and it's interesting to hear from random people in my life who I haven't talked to in a long time. No, but it. definitely, man. And, and you know, I, I and you kind of hinted at it a little while ago, but you know, I don't want to say what's the end game, but you know, I, I feel like with the AI launch so that you can just do casual updates like at, at leisure, right? At, and maybe with customer feedback, and maybe that's kind of the question that I, I kind of want to throw at you. Um, how important is customer feedback? And what is the best way to get that? Is it social media? Is it going to the Audible app? Is it going to the website? What is the best way for people to give you that feedback to possibly influence like, you know, future updates and tweaks? Uh, it's really just when they email us. I, I don't really do social media. It's interesting okay. because our stuff appears on a lot of like news websites, but yeah. uh, I don't, I'm really, I'm not a, like a Twitter user. Honestly, like we have an account if I need to respond to someone or someone tweeted something at us, but I don't use it as a method of our communication to the world. Um, mainly they just, they email us and the people who buy, who have ideas, uh, they're vocal about their ideas for improvements and they know they just go to the contact us on the, on the e-commerce website or, or on our company website. Got you, got you, got you. And, and, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying a moment ago, what in your ideal world would be like, 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 you can drop the mic, so to speak, on the audible. Like, like, is there a certain, like, goal that you have in mind? All these interviews about sales and positive customer feedback. But, you know, is it alien blowjobs and things like that? Because, you know, we have a, we have, you know, a world that lives in this fantasy VR world. Like, kind of, as you go forward, because this AI thing is going to just last, what seems like forever. But I know as you being a creator, someone that's always trying to, you know, make sure you have the best possible option out there in this genre or in this industry what is it um at the end of the day where you feel like people retire you can just kind of kick your feet up and not really not have to work so hard so to speak yeah i mean I, I do it actually because i like doing it um and like i recently had an opportunity to be acquired 
Uh, and I turned it down because uh, the, I, I, I like doing this. It would be, it wouldn't make any sense to sell the business to someone and then have nothing to do to like lose the thing that I like to do. Um, yeah. So I don't think there's an end, honestly. You know, I love you it. could ask uh, at, at Apple, like, when is the iPhone going to be good enough? Like, the iPhone is never going to be good enough. There's always more stuff we can do with the iPhone. And so, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, I've been doing this 12 or 13 years, and the device behind you is like kind of version number seven yeah. or so. Uh, and we're, we have more things that we're planning to release in the next few years. And really, it's just a matter of releasing something, getting customer feedback, and also sometimes being pushed by competitors in the industry, just like Apple and Samsung are. Uh, there are there are competitors who come who might have a good idea or two, and people are always sort of looking at what people are doing, thinking how to improve it and moving forward. So um, I really enjoy always having this kind of technical challenges to work on. Uh, I enjoy the marketing side. So yeah, if I was if I was done, I would sell the business and I would I would uh, I don't know what I would do. I'd probably make another one. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably make a, a different one that I've been thinking about. So, no, I think this has uh, strangely become my life's work is to just make a better and better and better blowjob machine. And no. yeah, I would be happy when it's really, I, we put this in our press release and it's really true. I would feel more satisfied when my machine can give a, a blowjob to a person and it's indistinguishable from a human given blowjob. Like where you, and, and obviously, you know, it's a machine, so you think, well, you're obviously going to know if you're in a machine or not. I don't know. Maybe in another ten. I mean, it's not like around the corner, but it's not unimaginable that in another ten or fifteen years of this continual development, maybe the machine-given blowjob really is indistinguishable from the human-given blowjob. And then I would feel at least that's sort of a goal that I work towards. And I, I when I, you know, um, innovate on the product side, I look at doing things that make it feel more like a human and less like a machine? Yo, 100% no, Brian. Like, again, I tell you, man, I would love to just like, literally just steal you for like an hour and a half, two hours, because there's so many layers to it, man. But obviously, I, I promise I'm going to let you go, though. But I do want to just kind of- It's fine. I, I, have a, I, have, I have a little time. It's I, I like talking to you. Nice. No, no. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brian. No, because like I said, it's so important. Me personally, like, attack the culture, just kind of give the context. It is really, you know, it, hip hop is obviously the base, but it's more so lifestyle, man. Like one part of the big thing of hip hop is Netflix and chill and chill, uh, chill kind of implies sexual relations. So that's why like, I love things like this because there's so much, for whatever reason, there's so much tension with the dating world. And again, I go back to the marketing that you have on, on this site uh, of just like these cartoon characters. Like you hit everything right on the head about just like, left swipe right swipe there's so much things that you know a lot of guys you know you wake up and you need to kind of let loose or maybe you've had a long day and, and you just kind of want to okay personal mom i'm just gonna get personal because we got a few minutes to spare right right i Please, literally yeah. had a, a slam dunk let, you know it's kind of a throwback expression i had a booty call like lined up man like i had a, had a girl not too far away and i was like hey let's link up and i, I knew it would end in that and i'm gonna be honest with you and i told my friend that he was cracking i'm laughing I looked at my Audible AI and I was like, ah, you know what? I got a few things to put up on the site. And I knew like I was I was in, right? Like there, there's there's no dinner, there's no having to go out on a couple like you know, ice cream. I knew I was good. And I say that to say it kind of it gets a lot more work done, man. And I don't know if that was another intent behind the Audible AI plus, but for me personally, as a worker, as someone that's just always attached to some type of device interviews, yeah. writing, whatever the case is. Wow, man. So I can't thank you enough. I, I, I just think of it as a, not so much as a sex toy, but as a thing that brings some amount of happiness or pleasure to the user for some period of time. So um, yeah, it has a sexual use, but it's really about, you know, like what's it worth to someone? I feel a little bit shitty or I don't want to go out or whatever. What if I can use this thing for 30 minutes and it just kind of like brings brings my chemicals up a bit, just makes it feel a bit better. And I mean, this is, I, I feel happy that it could be part of people's uh, daily or weekly sort of routine where uh, it, it has a role to play in their life like any other device that they get some type of happiness from, from using. Yeah, 100%. And, and again, I'm gonna just kind of say one more personal thing about me and then we'll get back to like yeah. a few more kind of non-personal things. But 
You know, I, I personally don't smoke weed, right? Uh, and I know a lot of people in my field, they like go smoke something and then like review a film so that they're showed out. I was joking with my friend, I haven't done this yet. So, so anyone that I'm gonna review your film, don't worry yet. But I was like, yo, you know what? I, I feel like I might load up the all of low, uh, AI plus, I should say, and like review some films that I'm not the most excited about. And it was like, he was cracking up. He was like, that's the equivalent of someone getting high uh, to, to like watch something that they're not that excited about. So. I gotta say, man, there's so many, to, to your point, and to what I said earlier about being envious of girlfriends that literally had like like the, the tiny vibrators in their purses, I feel like yeah. I'm now on their level in some, in some way. Nice. You empowered <laughs> nice. me, Brian. You have empowered me, Brian. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I'm very happy to hear it. I mean, it's really, uh, I, I really feel good when, when people, yeah, add it to their life routine. If, even if it's once a week, uh, for a, a 30, like a special session, or they're going to put on their VR headset, mm -hmm. uh, just to sort of create this sort of separation from the rest of their life and just take some time. Some people, they can do that at the gym or they get a massage or whatever, but masturbation is a normal part of like separating from, from the world, uh, for a short time, at least hopefully not too, too long. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to like be a part of that for people. I think it's important for, for everyone's yeah. mental health. Yeah, and, and like, you know, up until recently, and recently, I mean, a few years ago, when I first was introduced to the first Auto Blow, uh, I think it was actually Auto Blow 2 at the time, but man, masturbation has become such a taboo, and because of the Auto Blow, the Auto Blow 2, the Auto Blow uh, AI Plus, it really kind of just says, oh, wow, okay, I don't know if you want to put it right next to your PlayStation 5 necessarily, but you can put it somewhere, and it doesn't have to be like under, like, or in the attic under some boxes, like you can kind of have it at a reasonable place and it doesn't feel too taboo. Like we're, we're getting closer to that point of acceptance and realizing, oh, wow. Again, keep it in the bedroom. You don't need to put it out next to, you know, your kids' toys, right? It might get mixed yeah. up. Yeah, you'd be surprised though. I think it's, uh, it depends where you live in the country and your ideas and your, your community. I mean, I've seen a post on Reddit uh, I participated in that uh, a woman, was that because I get an alert, we search the Audible every day for like, uh, sorry, the Audible, search the web every day for the word Audible. Sometimes I find like a random thread. And this woman uh, was, it was in the marriage subreddit and she found her husband's Audible. And she was like, wrote this whole book there about how offended she was and hurt. And she was asking the other people like, should I feel this hurt about it? And <laughs> yeah, she was really uh, devastated that her husband masturbated, which like people were like, you know, to super tell you, crazy. like, <laughs> yo, super crazy, yeah. right? All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, one thing that I do want to make sure, and I keep on saying one thing, and actually, like 20 other things, but I really do kind of want to end on this. So, because yeah. of the AI element, uh, should we like anticipate a lot of Apple employees starting to fill out applications, uh, to work over at the Auto Blow Enterprises? Man, I feel like no, now, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, you'd be surprised that, uh, you know, when, when we do work on the technology side. Uh, it's very, very difficult for us to hire. Uh, most people refuse to even discuss our projects with us when they know that it's for a sex toy. Um, there are some people who did the, the machine learning study um, on, on porn. Uh, it's a, comp a small company did that. They were about the ninth or 10th company that I called at, at proposing the project back to them. I said, hey, real, you know, we want to analyze it, that, you know, uh, porn videos to understand the movements that occurred during blowjobs. They don't even want to know more. They just say, that project's not for us. Certainly they're capable of that, but they just refuse, refuse to do it. So no, uh, it's normally very, we have a very small team. And when we ever need new people, uh, it's hard. People don't really come to us. We have to go out and spend 10 times the effort of other companies to find someone. And then those people don't put this on their resume. You know, they'll work on this privately and force us to make sure they'll, they'll confirm with us that we'll never tell anybody what they've done as if it's a, uh, if it's illegal, which it's not, uh, but no, people are very freaked out for anyone else to know that they've worked on this product not everybody, but, um, the, a lot of the highly skilled technical people are afraid to let people know their contribution to the product.
Guess, and again, that's why I pushed for this. This is more or less why I said, you know, cool, we'll run the press release. We'll, we'll just kind of run that like little tidbit. But because people need to see you, man. And I love the fact that you, you are very hands on in a lot of videos and actually show folks how easy it is to clean it and do all this stuff. But I mean, like, you're such a dope person. And I think that sometimes gets lost in translation, which goes to the point of corporations buying your product and then just slapping a price tag on it and keeping it moving. When they see who you are, Brian, and they're like, oh, yo, I, I, I look like Brian or I have a friend like Brian or, you know, I can relate to Brian. That's what yeah. makes it it's so important. And, um, you know, one, uh, I'm just going to say one thing, but it kind of in closing, how is the European market been? Because that's one thing I always get a little bit weird about because, you know, Western over here, we can be a little bit more too conservative, but I'm just curious, how does the product perform overseas? Do you have any of that type of data or, or rough feelings? Yeah, I mean, we sell to uh, four uh, major distributors in Europe and okay. uh, and also in Australia, sell to a large distributor, two, two of them actually in Australia. Uh, the market is great in Europe, but you know, you know, it's it's not exactly about the market. It's also about the uh, the, the people who distribute products. Uh, they also make their own products, and uh, people are concerned on the price of products. But mainly, our market is great in Europe because people um, have seen the product uh, on the internet. You know, when our when when our stuff gets big on the internet. Uh, from a post like on Vice or to, uh, today there's one on Lad Bible, that kind of stuff often makes it to the uh, almost all of the European countries and then it gets translated into the local language for whatever market on different news websites. So it's really that we generated our own demand uh, within the EU and so the distributors are putting a product out there that I'd say the majority of the maybe the buyers have seen it somewhere uh, already. But no, it's. Uh, I don't think it's that different from the U.S. market in that regard. Uh, we sell through the distributors, and uh, I don't think there's big, smaller or bigger demand. We don't see it as much because we don't sell direct in Europe. We sell to the distributors, but in the U.S., we sell direct. So we have like a lot more our contact, and we sell to the stores in the U.S. too. But our contacts are really more with the customers uh, in the U.S. Than, than in Europe. So we understand yeah. them a bit better. Gotcha. I just want to make sure when I go out to London, I don't have to bring mine. I can get like a London version. And I try out uh, a lot of, like, no, no, I will, I, Brian, I am going to finally, do, I'm going to stop myself. Because like I said, you know, you're just so dope and we've gone back and forth. So to finally be able to connect with you, man. And I've said this in the past, whenever there's, there's a, and you might not want to weigh in on other sex projects and whatnot, but sex toy projects, but like, yo, you have so much knowledge, Brian, of this industry. I definitely want you to feel inclined. I don't want to wait another five years before we can have a conversation for the next, because look, your hands are going to be full playing around with, the AI and the freestyle feature. And uh, there's just so many dope things to get from you, Brian. So I can't thank you enough. Are, are there any final things that, that we just maybe overlook that you want people to know about? Or can we just go to audiblow.com? Yeah, they can just go to, if they're really curious to learn, they can go to audiblow.com. They can watch the cartoons there that explain all the features. It's my preferred method of communicating the, what the devices do is through cartoons. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, and thanks for having me on the show, and I, I appreciate it, and I think your website and your YouTube channel are great, and I've watched, like, some of your other conversations, and you're really good at it, so I hope that you, like, continue to find success in it. Yo, uh, Brian, this is about you, man. You don't make me all blush. No, okay? it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. No, it's, so, you're, no. I, I, the, the website is really great, and, and, um, and I see what you're, what you're doing and starting to do on YouTube, and you've got some very interesting guests, I thought. And so I don't think that that's like that easy to do. So I hope that, uh, you know, the, the Google gods like start to smile on you with views. It's yes. hard because there's a lot of content. But once uh, like they start to smile on you, I think they will continue to smile because you had some very interesting guests. And um, yeah, the topics are, are cool that you cover. And I think when you if you keep at it, then uh, I think you'll see a lot of success in it. Yeah, right. I feel like I'm on, like I'm a guest on the Auto Blow show now, right? Like, I feel like you know, you're yeah, going, yeah, it's, you're like, turn the table. I can start answering questions. No, honestly, Brian, I'm gonna again. I gotta keep you out of here, otherwise I'm gonna keep on talking to you. Brian, you're amazing. I can't wait to flip this around and I uh, get it featured, and I will be sending a live link. So that part will be edited out. So Brian, get on out of here. Thank you so much for all your time, man. Okay. See you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. But I'm gonna get on out of here as well. See you, Brian.